Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, man. I tell you, bro. It's been a minute, bro. I had to get this review out at some point because I, I ain't gonna lie. I have not finished the story. I'm still on like Piccolo. And I, mean, I finished Piccolo, but I'm still on Vegeta and everything. But I'm taking my time, as you guys can see. If you guys want to check out my content, I've been posting a lot of the stories, letting you or uh, showing you guys how to actually get the what ifs. So if you guys want to check those out and actually don't have or have some trouble getting the what ifs, go ahead and go to my episode battles playlist and check those out. With that being said, leave a like in the video, subscribe if you're new because this is my Sparking Zero official review now dragon ball spark and zero has was dropped on october 11th and it has sparked a lot of controversy since it's dropped first of all i have to get the bugs and stuff out the way i have to get the i have to get the negatives out the way before i start you know hyping on the game all right uh this game definitely lost launched with some bugs it launched with quite a few things uh input delays uh classic controls just not working uh vanish counters and stuff like that not being the windows just not being right and everything uh definitely some other bugs and improvements that needed to be in the game i feel like the episode battles were a little weird i feel like some of the cpus were just not supposed to be able to do some of the things that we're supposed to do or anything i'm not talking about the great ape i beat that i don't know what y'all on but that one was that was pretty crazy but it, 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 i beat that let's <laughs> just be that in four tries with that being said when we get on into the actual overall you know negatives of the game there's a lot more stuff that goes on in the community when he talks about you know fusions and all that good stuff in my opinion all that stuff is you know kind of opinionated the more the negatives i focus on is the concrete mechanical issues like the bugs and stuff like that but we'll get into on we'll get on into the other stuff a little later what i want to get into first though is the gameplay so the gameplay is definitely the same as budokai Tenkai g3 they definitely wanted to keep the framework there but i tell you what this game feels different than tenkai AG. it's the same mechanics but it feels different and even have some, uh they have some extra mechanics as well so when it comes to the gameplay you have different types of counters different types of z counters and all that stuff some were in the budokai tenkai G series some were not and so we have super counters z counters revenge counters uh you have perception you have all types of ways that defense defense can be incorporated in this game and i what i wanted to hint on the gameplay or harp on is the defense because the defense could use a little work but the defense is actually very very good it's actually some of the best i've seen in some fighting games in my opinion when it comes at least when it comes to specifically arena fighters why i say this is because you can counter almost everything i understand that there's some issues with maybe the window timing especially with the z counters and stuff like that but people that are complaining, you can counter almost everything in the game. If you're getting back shots, there's super counters. If you're getting vanished out in the air, you can Z counter. Even if you're in a normal combo when they hit before they hit that last hit, you can Z counter. Uh, you can revenge counter. Revenge counter costs two still uh, two blast stocks or two skill counts. And uh, if you use those wisely, a lot of people don't know that revenge counters kind of go through key blasts as well you can revenge counters through key blasts you can revenge counter through uh hits when you're being comboed you just can't revenge counter when you're being hit in the back which is why it's it kind of that skill back skill gap comes in because super counters are really really tight i just feel like the super counters are way too tight in my opinion i feel like the z z vanishes and super counters should be switched i feel like the z vanishes are too open and i feel like the super counters are too tight Ah, uh, that's my only thing with the the defense when it comes to super counters and z counters are uh, but when it comes to those it's still efficient when you do pull off this the super counter it's this big like hit effect that comes and it, it could throw off your opponent if they don't know what they're doing because the the super counter goes into a hit and if you miss the hit or if somebody z counters that hit it can get it can get crazy when it comes to defense with all that being said though you can also tailor your your moves so that you can go into these counters almost automatically so what i mean by that is you can go to a combo string and if somebody z vanishes out you can turn around and super counter them and continue you, you know your your uh your, your assault stuff like that is what really really resembles an anime game in my opinion uh with that also being said when it comes to the gameplay not just defense but offense it's pretty simplistic i would say that um you do have your square triangle you, you turn around you can turn them around you can turn them uh, you can stun them which is one of my favorite ways to do it um but all these combos again can be countered out of it so with that being said combo strings i have not seen much now of course in the higher tier ranks you might see a lot of them but i have not seen much combo stringing in this game because i honestly think that combo stringing will get you in trouble in sparking zero because of so many ways to counter in defense 
Um, in in Budokai, Budokai Tenkaichi, yeah, you could counter on defense pretty good. But again, like with the Z counters, especially in B BT3, there was a window. The window would get tighter as you would Z counter. So it would it was hard. It was more of a cost to Z counter, and you would kind of have to let yourself get hit a couple times uh, in order to get yourself back into the game. With this, you could you could Z counter as much as you want. It it just it 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 only matters if you have key. So as long as the person has more key than you, or you have more key than the person, you're pretty much gonna win that that uh, that uh, face off with the Z counter. Y'all know how it goes. You one Z one vanishes, the other vanishes, the other yeah. That whole sick that whole sequence, the famous Tenkaichi sequence, always happening. Uh, but it's much more frequent this time around, and I don't remember it happening. I remember in BT3, it was a rare occasion because you had to get those timings down, and the window had to be precise. But now it's kind of easy to get them because you know you can kind of just get the timing because it's right before the right before they hit is when you hit that Z counter. But with all that being said, the combat and the combo stringing is pretty good though. Once you do get your strings off, oh my gosh, if you can get to a thirty hit and then go into a super, ooh, that guy is cooked. Whoever you're fighting, I'm sorry. The when you do get condom, oh, it's like I said, what? Oh, chill out. <laughs> when you do get uh, combos off. It is excellent, it feels great, and it feels good and satisfying to do. I promise you, this game really feels like you're fighting in an anime. And that's what I will say about the gameplay. The gameplay feels just like I'm fighting. I have not been in an anime. I have not been drawn in no anime. I don't have no idea what it is like to fight in Dragon Ball. But I tell you what, when I play Sparking Zero, I feel like I'm doing it. <laughs> I feel like I'm playing Spark. I feel like I'm playing the anime. And I think that is the big takeaway from this gameplay aspect. Bro, it doesn't get better than this. This is the best. And I mean best. Absolute best way that you can portray an anime fight in a game. I am astounded about how... The animations tie into the fight to the point where these cutscenes look like I'm watching the anime myself. And it's like, bro, I'm doing this in the in the game. It it just feels like I'm playing the anime. And not just the, the not just the animations, but like I said, the counters and stuff. It looks like we're actually fighting in the anime, how they counter and Z counter and vanish and, and, and the clashes and the bean clashes and the ultimates. Like all that stuff encompasses an anime fighting show. And it's like we're playing it. It just feels amazing to play. It feels great to be in the tournament of power arena and be playing as UI or be playing as even like somebody like like Yamcha or Vegeta or just even the roster, which we're gonna get into. But like, it just feels great to play. And that's what I can say about the gameplay, bro. It feels amazing. You can say all the stuff about the technical stuff all you want, but it feels great. And so with that, the gameplay definitely is high up on the list. The gameplay is the bread and butter of this game. The gameplay is what you're gonna wanna play this for. If you sat in your room and said, man, I like Xenoverse, I like fighters, but then I really wish I could like feel like I'm playing in the anime. You know, I, w I wish I could feel like I'm playing Goku. Play Sparky Zero. Play Sparky Zero. And I'm not even exaggerating. Play Sparky. You're going to literally you're gonna be like, bro, bro, I don't even think I need to. Like, I would watch the anime and then I'd be like, bro, I'm going to just go do that. I'm going to just go play the game. Like, literally, I can say that now. Like, other games, you would do that. Like, oh, I'm, I'm going to play Xenoverse. But it wouldn't feel the same. This one feels good. All right. I ain't going to lie. I I've been hopping on this little feeling of the gameplay this for like two minutes but y'all get my gist the gameplay feels great it feels rem reminiscent of the anime which is what they were trying to do be more accurate and so getting on into that we're gonna get on into the roster of this thing and how that ties into the gameplay because the roster is so extensive to the point where i don't even think i've tried all 182 characters yet but i feel as though i've played all of them this the, the roster is so diverse it's so unique that when you play against these people it's not like you're f some of them it's not like you're just fighting that character it's like you're fighting them at their best you're fighting this character as if they as if they had everything on the line like it's for example if i'm fighting somebody with like say super saiyan 4 gogeta but then i fight somebody say i fight like super saiyan god go uh, vegeta their move set is so unique and so tailored to that to that person that it it makes the it makes the fight feel that much more realistic right and what i'm talking about here is the lore accuracy of the roster each character is different each transformation is different each 
character has their own move sets and own transformations again like the like the previous series but what they did here uh, i feel like is different they made sure that each transformation and each character had its own set of moves which is something i i, I was something i said in Buka, budokai tenkaichi they would give some characters the same moves or the same type of you know full power volley or something like that no each character has their own little move set some of them may have the same type of moves of course but they each have their own like type of move move and some of them even do them differently or their animations are different so you may have full power volley on frieza soldier but he may do it a little differently than uh say cyberman or something like that i don't i don't remember if they have the same move but you get my gist like each character does have their own unique way of not only doing the move but having their own move sets as well to uh to kind of play off of now a lot of them do have the same kind of skill stuff like you know after image and stuff like that but aside from that each character i think is a little bit different uh, especially with the transformations they, they, did, they did really good with transformation like especially goku and vegeta i didn't think they would feel as different as they do but when you pick up a blue uh, vegeta it feels way different than when you pick up a regular vegeta or when you pick up a super vegeta when you pick up a, uh, pick up a goku from mid it feels way different than super vegeta or super goku or super even super goku feels different from super god like it's so the, the character or the roster the roster is justified, basically, is what I'm trying to say. The 182 characters, I know some people are like, oh, but the roster is bloated because of the transformations. Bro, them transformations, they they basically different characters. I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, each character is unique. It's diverse. They have their own movesets, and they're lore accurate. And I think that's one of the big things I like about this game, is that each character, I don't care if I'm Super Saiyan for Gogeta. Yajirobi should not be beating me. His health should be the way it is. My health, the, his, the fusion's health should be the way it is. So it's like, I get the whole health bar and stuff like that, but it's, the game has stressed four things to make sure that it is, um, to make sure that it is meeting its marketing needs. Remember, the game has to meet its marketing standards, marketing standards, and they've been marketing shake the earth, break the heavens, and what? Lore accuracy and big roster. They, they delivered on all four, on all four. All right, and the roster is justified. So with that being said, again, when, when it comes to the roster, each one has their own unique moves and all that good stuff. And how that ties into the gameplay is how, again, the lore accuracy ties into the gameplay. Because if, again, you're playing fusions and stuff like that, you should not be having the one up. But, but that's the beauty in Tenkaichi and that's the beauty in Sparking Zero. Because even with the roster being as big as it is, anybody can still win the game. Yeah, Cyberman can still beat Fuse Masu. You just gotta be good at what? Your super counters, your Z counters, and your and your defense and your combos. That's why I said it ties into the it ties into the gameplay. The lore accuracy ties into the gameplay. Because, because there's such a good defense and because there's so there's so many ways to counter, super counter, and Z counter, just because you do have a fusion does not necessarily mean you're gonna win. It just means that you have an upper advantage because you have more health and you can deal more damage. But if that person is good, if they're cracked, if they know how to not get hit, oh, sir, sir, you're in for a rude awakening. And that's what I love about this game. It's the seesaw effect of the, of the game that I think that has a lot of people up in arms. One minute you're 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 beating somebody's ass because you have a fusion, but then you pick pick a regular character, and then now now it's not so easy. Now it's not so easy to get that win. You have to play a little harder, hit more of your super counters, be a little technical, be a little bit more precise, be damn near perfect. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't want to do that, so they just go with the fusion and stuff like that. Hey, I have no I have no problem with playing with fusions or UI. I, it's it's my game. I just paid sixty dollars. Who the hell are you to tell me what the hell to play? I I don't understand why y'all be listening to people on the internet. Why in God's name are you listening to somebody telling you what to do with your money that you paid for a $60 game? You are crazy. You're dumb. You're not telling me what to do. I can complain all day. You don't got to listen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, the lore accuracy and everything ties into the gameplay. I don't think the gameplay needs to be touched at all because of the way that they've portrayed the anime perfectly. They did their job. They wanted us to feel like we're playing in the anime, and that's exactly how we feel. I'm sure those characters that you're playing feel the same way when they're fighting the fusions. <laughs> so with that being said, roster, gameplay, now we have story. Story, I will say this, and I'm going to be completely honest. In my opinion, the story is fine. But what I will say is that for a $70 game, for a full game, for a full reha rehash of the story, you could have went a little harder. But 
that's honestly asking for too much because they gave us cinematic cutscenes that you can go to point of views and watch different POVs and stuff like that. And then they gave us different what if storylines that made the story just just so much better, bro. Playing as Super Saiyan or playing against Super Saiyan Vegeta on Namek was awesome. Bro, playing against Super playing with Super Saiyan Goku against Great 8 Vegeta was awesome those are just some of the spoilers and what ifs i want to say because i don't want to spoil too much there's so many other what ifs bro there's that, that gohan what if that i'm pretty sure everybody's seen mine is a little different but you know what i'm saying if you guys want to check that out please check it out because definitely a different story i did a mod with b so uh, there's a little little sneak peek with that though the story could have definitely used more work but come on man them cinematic cutscenes. if you watch some of them they're so good there's so I haven't even, I've seen some of them and I don't think I've gotten to the best ones yet. I I seen the Goku and Piccolo and stuff, but like I said, I haven't done all the stories, so bro, I haven't seen the best ones yet. But from what I can see, bro, it is thought they, they well they put some thought into it. Now I do have some problems with some of them, like I ain't gonna lie, the Teen Gohan one. They could have did a lot better on that one in my opinion. But I do think my only gripe with the story is the little slideshows. It can get a little quiet at times. Uh, you're mostly reading subtitles. Sometimes they just talk and it's just like the screen is there and then nobody's like moving their lips or anything. It's just like a slideshow. Um, but when they do give cutscenes, it is pretty entertaining. Now, what I do want to give more grace on that point, though, is to say that I do think they're kind of trying to resemble the manga more so than they are trying to resemble anime. Because as I was watching it with those little slideshows and stuff, I was kind of, it was giving more manga. I was like, okay, well, it's like we're kind of reading the manga panels. And then we're going into a cutscene. So it was like, oh, manga and anime. Oh, so they're trying to combine the manga and the anime feel. That's pretty cool. Like, that's what I threw it up to. Even though I didn't really quite like it, I was just like, okay, cool. Like, that, that, no, that's kind of that's kind of fine. Like, you try to give a, a variety of feel towards this game to make sure that everybody's having a good time. Because, you know, there's, there's manga-only readers out there and there's anime-only watchers. So, I think that the aspect of the story could have been a little bit better. It definitely was the... Well, when I say worst, I mean, I don't mean bad. I, just... Based on Sparky Zero's metric, I would say it was the worst part of the game, but not the worst thing about the game, if that makes sense. I, if that makes sense, if I'm portraying that. But when it comes to the game's metrics, yeah, that was just probably the lowest part of the game was the story. Uh, but it is kind of cool to just cool to just sit down and kind of play. I play it at night and stuff like that on stream and just kind of vibe out. It's kind of it's, it's a little vibe. I, like I said, I, I get the appeal to it because. It doesn't have to be so hard all the time, but if you are playing on reduced di difficulty or uh, or unreduced difficulty, it can get a little tedious. I ain't gonna lie, that Piccolo one with Frieza almost made me crash out, bro. Being that in under two minutes is crazy, bro. Like some of these what ifs, like to get these what ifs, and I think that's one of the things I wanna talk about, to get these what ifs, I feel like they're a little bit too hard. And I mean, I mean I've gotten all of them, so you can't tell me nothing. I, I, got, I got the ones I played, I've gotten them, so. But it, the part I'm trying to say is like, they could be a little too fast, can't they? Like a little too fast like we gotta we gotta beat them in damn near like under two minutes and i was like okay buddy like that's a little two minutes and 30 seconds maybe like oh no because the piccolo one was really what gave me that idea because i was like dang piccolo is not even that strong how 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 fast you want me to be guy like you know what i'm saying but i ended up beating him and stuff like that so it definitely is a challenge when it comes to that aspect but other than that bro the story is pretty good i would give the story like just on our own on its own metric like a 6.5 out of uh, 7 out of 10 Definitely, definitely uh, by its own metrics, it would it could have done better. But but with the whole overall consensus of the game, the menu screens, the HUDs, the episode battles, the tournaments, the online. I haven't even got into the online yet, which we're going to get into right now because I, you know, run along on time and everything. But the online aspect of everything is what really sold this game for me. Um, I don't really like the casual side when, you know, you have to pick a random lobby, but it does help because if you make a lobby, you know, random people can join in. It helps when you join with your friends, but the rank matching, uh, rank, rank matchmaking, stuff like that is actually pretty good. The way you get to find your lab, your lobbies and stuff like that, getting into the actual map, picking your map and then training in there and then having you load up with the opponent. I, it, it, the little tidbits like that is what I really like about the game. And I think it was what put the game up for me because they may not have put work in stuff that we, we might have thought was obvious, but they put work in things that we overlooked. And I think that's a good thing. Budokai Tekaichi was great, but it already had a foundation. It already had a good story. It already had uh, good mechanics. It already had good characters. You know what I'm saying? It had a big roster. 
But what I think Sparky and Zero wanted to do here was kind of give us a splash of life into that. And so that's why I think the HUD is the way it is. Zeno's orders, Weiss's orders, all that stuff, the challenges, the encyclopedia is really nice, the data, checking records, all those little stuff, the phone, little stuff, the technology, little kid trunks and kid uh, uh, Goten playing with the iPad, you know, stuff like that. The opening episode battle, the, the maps when you go into the episode battle, the what is past, those little visual aspects is what i really do enjoy when i open the game it's visually pleasing it's visually pleasing to open it's visual visually pleasing to look at um and that's like one of the things the last things you can go off of this kind of to kind of put the icing on the cake you know now lastly custom battles is a different story quick, kind of quick segment but custom battles it takes a long time to actually execute which is one of the reasons why i actually haven't been doing it you guys know we have the what if series don't worry guys i'm kind of doing a re re-roll out of those because i need to make sure i'm dedicating time to those episode battles or to those custom battles because you have to really 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 dive deep and it takes like hours at least an hour to, it took me two hours to make my first one so i actually want to do share those guys i actually do want to share those with you guys i posted a few if you guys want to check out my first custom battles and all that things all things like that but the custom battles is really it's a really good addition like i've been saying it's a really good addition to add on to the package so basically be like okay if you don't like all the stories that we have how about you go create your own and then the mods are going sick on pc and don't worry we're gonna get into those too but yeah i just wanted to mention the custom battles because custom battles really is the one of the highlights that i pe think people a lot of people i think a lot of people overlook because of the simple fact that it does take a while to get, to get in there but i know the people that are really creative and, and that do stuff like this that just spend time on on modes like this and any other game and other games are having a blast with custom battles right now so i really do appreciate them for allowing us to have the power to even do that and make our own custom battles and as you can see the same method is used in episode battles as well to say that this game not only looks good feels good feels like i'm playing the anime and has a pretty decent story that's a good package game right there like that that is literally a game you want pure fun now if you're not having fun i really really would like to know your experiences because maybe it could be some other issues but with all that being said, this is definitely a 20 minute uh, uncut review of Sparking Zero Man. Uh, I enjoyed it. On all aspects, I really enjoy this game. This is my game of the year. I know I, just, I, know I said Black Myth Wukong was on top, but based on bias, this is definitely my game of the year just because of the pure fun aspect without any pure like hard, cod, hard, creep, hard, or hard concrete metrics or anything. This game is definitely one of the better games of this year along with others as well. Uh, when it comes to just the pure fun aspect and the pure joy of having a 17 year old edition or reiteration of a series come to life like this is just insane y'all insane overall i give sparking zero an 8.5 out of 10. uh yes the 0.5 might be a little biased or anything but it definitely made its mark in Dragon Ball games and anime games in general. I think this is, when it comes to anime game games, the best Dragon Ball or best anime game ever sold to date. You can agree, disagree with me on that, whatever. Um, 3 million copies in a few days. Who knows what it's at now? Um, I really, really enjoy this game. I play it every day when I try to get on. Lately, I've been on Black Ops 6, though. I ain't gonna lie. So I'm gonna be doing my um, first impressions and stuff on that. So make sure you guys stick tuned on that. But with the, with that being said, this is my review on Dragon Ball Spark Zero. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys, if you guys want more content, this is kind of like the break uh, video in between the next roll I have. Because I gotta, we gotta do 182 character breakdown, man. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be crazy. But I really appreciate you guys for watching. This is 20 minutes of, of a review. We're leaving this uncut for you guys. So you guys can hear my raw format, my raw feelings on the game, how I actually feel. I haven't even finished the game. And I just know. It's, it, it's great but you know i played a lot of i played a lot of hours so i have close to 100 hours in it and then you know the story i'm just, I'm just taking my time I'm trying to get the content out for you guys stuff like that so definitely something you can take your time with but on with my rambling i hope you guys like the video please leave a like on the video subscribe if you're new and get on some more spark and zero content peace